Hi there, Mom Bev here. So I am aware that the video that I have uploaded in YouTube isn't the full video of our lecture. By the way, I have posted in our group the link to the Microsoft's way. You can find there our lecture. But to just to uh, correct the video that I have uploaded earlier about this lecture, which is incomplete, I will be uploading another video uh, which will be I promise to complete it so please bear with what I have up, uh, what I have uploaded uh, uh, as the first one okay so this lecture is about inspection or uh, and testing configure configured computer systems and network so actually on the video we, we stopped on the identification of hazards so you actually on the first mp4 you can actually identify what hazards are there at the guy's home so by that you can actually find what are the dangers that he might encounter especially when he left the key uh dun sa doorway niya and then yung mga bags na nakaharang also the snowy uh grounds outside then the access code is even there uh and yung kanyang coffee maker in insert niya ulit dun sa heater without any content so maaring sumabog yon uh, another thing is yung posture niya nung nagla laptop siya sa may upuan masakit yun sa likod and sa batok and the reason why nag off yung lights is maybe there was an intruder dahil nga na left niya yung key niya sa labas okay so with that our lecture is actually about the safety precautions about uh, this is actually about OHS so as you all know OHS is occupational health and safety so we have these policies all over and all over again even when you are in your last CSS year, uh, you should know as a CSS major or you are specializing in the CSS course, you should know how to behave well more than other people because you're the one who is specializing on that. Also, with regards to working with computers, servicing computers, or just being online. There. Uh, sometimes, I have noticed that OHS is was also called as OSH but it's the same meaning actually I wonder why is it like that so ang OHS it's a system that you can use especially when you are working so that you may prevent illnesses and injury so that is with regards to identification and recognizing hazards and risks that yun nga, might cause accidents so there are standards actually in OHS, but the main point here, each of you has the responsibility to your classmates, to your friends, to your teachers, and to the school to report any circumstances that you find uh, very hazardous on the school or in somewhere else within the vicinity of the school. And you must be aware of the type of hazards that can be possibly presented in the environment. So it doesn't mean that even if you are a student, you are not uh, be following the OHS. It's not like that. Actually, it OHS must be followed at home, in school, in workplace, everywhere. Because actually, we cannot proceed accidents. They always happen. So the best thing to do is to prevent that. So where are the procedures? We need to identify the hazards. Close or clear the area near to the hazard. That means by the use of safety cones or... Safety cordons, the one that is used in SOCO, the yellow lines, mga ganyan. Or simply by just putting signages like wet floor. So that people may be aware that they cannot pass through that uh, wet floor. Yeah, they cannot pass through that floor because that is wet. So in that way, you can partition the hazard on which people won't be going near to that hazard. And that can actually protect other people from harm. 
So, if the hazard can be easily cleared, so do it. If there are chairs or boxes that is blocking the way of the door to the exits, you may just put away that those stuff, the chairs or whatever it is in that uh, position. But if there are times that you cannot clear the hazards, like for example, a spill of a chemical or electric uh, stuff, then you must report it to the appropriate person that can be the teacher nearest to you, that can be the SSG or the principal, so that you can ask for assistance. And after clearing the hazard, actually there are documentations that must be filled in uh, that can assist, uh, you can also assist in filling out those documentations. That is to identify and improve, identify those hazards that is evident in there and that can reduce the further accidents that may happen. Okay, so we actually use an accidental report form if there are hazards that is evident in the workplace. And an accident report form is a form used to give specific details with the accidents that happen in the laboratory during experiments. Though you, uh, So it means you cannot produce an accident report if there are no accidents. You will only need to do an accident report if there are accidents that happen like cuts, ano pa ba? Uh, electrocutions, ganyan, fractures, bone fractures, something like that. So, what does an accident report contain? It gives the following details. Name of the person who is injured, date and time of the accident, what kind of injury happened, uh, is it a cut, is it an electric shock, bone fracture, what is the first aid given, did you accompany him to the clinic or did you call the emergency hotline, okay, did you provide the, uh, did you provide the first aid kit, and this, uh, you will also see there the action taken to prevent further accidents. So here is a sample of an accident report. The form number here is just a number. It can start from 001. And the number, date here is the date that the accident happened. Room number, that can be if the accident was in the computer laboratory 3, then you may write there computer lab 3. Or if it is in, it happened in a room, you may write there the room number. Or if there are times that it happened in the hallways, you just write there the location. Here is the name of the person who was injured, his year and section, the type of injury, what happened to him, the cause of the injury, what is the reason why he had an accident, and under remedy, here is the first aid given to the, ano, to the person. Okay. So, actually, accidents also uh, has something to do with hazardous substances like spillage of poisonous uh, chemicals that can be airborne. When we say airborne, contaminations can be passed through the air. If you smell that chemical, uh, you need to be assessed whether you are infected or not. So, the first thing to do if there are hazardous substances like fire, yan, uh, you need to call the supervisor or the teacher and about the problem and tell them that it is very urgent. Now, an ev evacuation, evacuation can be called depending on the risk. If the risk of infection is very high risk, you need to evacuate the place. Of course, you will need to follow evacuation procedures just like when we do the fire drills. Ganyan. Uh, and then the teacher or the supervisor will call a fire brigade if it is a fire or a specialist personnel who will deal with the spill. <clears throat> fire exits. All fire exits must be kept clear from obstacles, meaning there should be no chairs blocking the fire exits, no boxes or any other type of obstacles that is placed near the far exit doorways because that may block the number of people who are passing in that ano, exit. All corridors 
need to have equipment stored only on one side. That is to ensure that uh, the other side is clear. Like for example, our uh, door is right here in the middle and we have, let's say, uh, organization locker there. And we have boxes here that is not allowed. If you have to pull, you cannot help but put stuff near the far exit doors. You can have the stuff be put at this one side only instead of both sides. Okay, what important is uh, there is at least one side near the far exit that is clear. Okay, so we're dealing now with the fire safety procedure. So there is a designated fire warden who will be in charge when a fire occurs. Uh, he will be calling the fire brigade, the mga bumbero, the firefighters. Uh, for, then they can, well, most of the time they assure safety of the person. But there are times that, you know, if others are not really that uh, brave enough to fight the fire or just escape from the fire then things might be worse like death because of the fire so if you find a fire you must assess the danger before doing anything you cannot just pour on water especially if that is electric uh, like for example you are disassembling uh, you are assembling a computer then you smell that there is like a burning circuit or whatever then you find out that your power supply is smoking then you immediately poured water on it so the water in an electric device is a conductor and that can cause electric shock to you especially if you're the one holding the water or the bottle of the water so instead of doing that uh, don't do anything first the first thing you need to think is that you need to escape from the vicinity of the fire. So if the fire is within the closed door or in a room, move everyone uh, outside the room, then close the room so that you can confine the fire. Then, of course, you call the attention of everyone that there's a fire. Uh, this glass, break the glass section is the one that we can find in the LRT stations, the one there that break the glass whenever there is fire or an emergency that actually triggers an alarm to call the attention or yes the attention of other people then if you are near the circuit breaker or the switch turn it off uh, so that no more ano, burning of circuit 3 which might cause uh, more fire in the place. Okay, so of course, after you have moved out from the vicinity of the fire, uh, the fire brigade will be interviewing you. You can just tell them the size of the fire, what is the cause of the fire, are there people or classmates whom you know that are hurt or trapped inside, uh, did anyone try to put it on, maybe... It is a malicious threat. Anyone really tried to burn the vicinity down? So you can just tell them. Now, if you can and if the fire extinguisher is available, then do so. Do so. Kill the fire using the fire extinguisher. Now, if it happens that a fire officer is not present, well, you must quickly take the responsibility. So this means that locate the source of the fire, locate any people if there are people trapped in there, remove all the people from the building, evacuate the place. Once you are outside, do a head count but this doesn't always work. Instead, you can find a body wherein if he is not with you when you are outside, that means that he might be there inside and trapped. So you need to notify the authorities that, hey, this body of mine is missing. 
Okay, so that ends the OHS of our lecture. Before we proceed to this personal safety while working with PCs, I want you to watch this <clears throat> short clip.
hope you have learned something about the video uh, especially about ergo ergonomics that is a new word that if ever you are lifting something or just sitting in front of a computer you, your posture must be proper so that you won't be feeling any stress with your back or your neck okay so we'll now proceed with the personal safety while working with PCs Okay, so as you can see, the picture here is very cluttered, especially on the cables down there. So we all know that when you are servicing a computer, you cannot wear, for girls, of course, you cannot wear heels. Don't wear your sandals. And for boys, don't wear slippers, please. You really need a rubber shoes because rubber shoes, soles are rubber. So it is a non-conductive and will lessen the the incident of being in an electric shock if there is ever an electrical accident now of course you cannot work on components that are plugged in imagine the power is on and you will be removing the hard disk so that's suicide you need to turn off everything before opening it and of course before removing any expansion cards like removing the memory or removing the sound card so you cannot also wear jewelries, watches, eye laces, necklaces, bracelets when you are servicing. And of course, do not pour water on electric components because water acts as a conductor. It can cause electric shock on you. So here we are on the guidelines for testing configured computer system and network. So the last uh, laboratory, uh, I mean, Performance that we made is the fabrication of computer Ethernet cables, right? The straight through and the crossover. So there are times that, uh, of course, the reason why we fabricate these cables is that we need to connect the computer to a router or a modem for it to have an internet connection. But what if after, well, successfully connecting the computer into the internet and you are already browsing, yet, after an hour, you notice that your internet connection is limited or you are being disconnected. So what will you do? You will need to assess uh, the problem and you need to actually test, uh, test it. So here are some guidelines. Check the physical connections. Who knows that someone might have unplugged the Ethernet cable at the back of your computer. So... That, on, that means that you cannot really connect to the internet if the Ethernet cable is unplugged. Or there are times that 
uh, loose wiring, especially on the modem. You just need to reset it. Ah, with regards to resetting the modem, we have the hard reset and the soft reset. When we talk about soft reset, we just pull the power cord from the outlet. Then let's wait for 10 seconds. Then I'll put it again there. So that is actually soft reset. Parang nagre-restart ka lang. The hard reset is um, using a pin and pushing a small hole at the back of the router for 10 seconds. That will uh, That is the hard reset because it will reset everything. The settings, the SSID. SSID means the name of the router or the signal, the ones you are connected to. If you want to connect to an internet connection, diba, you will search for a Wi-Fi name. So, yun, yun yung SSID. It will, with, with the hard reset, it will also reset the passwords. Yan. Especially during, uh, if there are servers, you need to verify if you can log in the server. That is with the checking of the network configuration. Maybe may nabago, nabago yung password administrator, mga ganyan. Uh, the thing to do there is to ping each computer. Remember ping? This is the CMD command that we type. Ping, space IP address, malalaman natin pag nag-reply, galing sa ping, ibig sabihin may connection yan. Pag nag-time out, wala kang connection. Okay? So, kung kanina, pag may mga na-accidents, we need to write accident report. Dito naman, kapag nagsiservice tayo ng computers, we need to write technical report. So, technical report looks like this. You have the name of the technician, that is actually your name. Date of inspection, then the time. Device tested, ano ba yung pinatest sa'yo or ano bang pinarepair sa'yo? Yan ba isang monitor? Ano ba yan? System unit, mouse, keyboard, printer. Specification, kung monitor siya, ilang inches. Anong klaseng monitor? CRT ba? Yun yung mga bulky LED monitor or LCD monitor ba? Kung system unit, anong specification ng system unit? Siya ba ay isang uh, Intel dual core? Ilang gigahertz? 2.4 gigahertz ba siya? Ilan yung RAM niya at hard disk space? Actually, makikita mo yung specification ng system unit with the use of DX Diag. Okay? Tatype mo lang si DX Diag sa search bar pag na, nandun ka na sa desktop. And then, dun mo makahanap yung specifications niya. Sa so, diagnosis, ano yung problem na nakita mo? And as sa action taken, paano mo inayos? Nag-reformat ka ba? Nagpalit ka ba ng kable? Kung ano yung mga ginawa mong troubleshooting dyan? Sa remarks, kung fix siya, pwede mo ilagay dyan na fix. Ibig sabihin, naayos mo yon. Kung hindi naman, pwede ka mag-suggest dito ng uh, purchase another um, another cable or another expansion card. So, kung may kailangan bilhin at palitan, lalagay mo yun dito. So, yun yung technical report. Now, let's go to the testing of wireless NIC. Ito yung kapag nawalan bigla ng internet. May dalawang klase ng connection. Itong may dalawang PC, ibig sabihin niya, nakalan. Ito yung ginagamitan ng Ethernet cable. Okay? Pag ganitong bars, ito yung wireless. Gumagamit siya ng Wi-Fi. Malalaman mo kasi, pag sa LAN, pag walang connection, may X yan. Kapag limited, mayroon yan triangle na, may exclam triangle na yellow, then may exclamation mark. Okay? Ganun din dito sa wireless. So, pag nakita mong some, may, may problem, like walang internet connection, hover mo lang siya. Let's say dito sa ward, hover mo, may lalabas dito na tooltip. Sinasabi naman dyan kung ano yung problema. So, yan. A network cable is unplugged. So, yung sabihin, maluwag lang yung nasa likod na RJ45. Di yung mismo Ethernet cable, maluwag lang siya. Kaya hindi siya naka-insert masyado. So, kailangan mo yung i-insert. Ganun din sa ano, wireless. Pag in-over mo dyan, may tooltip na lalabas. Nandyan kung connected ka ba. Okay? Ngayon, ang sinasabi niya dito, open CMD or open command window. Tapos, magpiping ka nitong IP address na to. Actually, itong IP address na to, IP address to para sa ano, router na Linksys, yung 127.0.0.1. Pero if ever ang router ma hindi naman pala Linksys, paano malalaman ang IP address? 
Tingnan mo yung ilalim ng router or modem. May text doon or sticker doon. Doon nakalagay ang kanyang IP address. Okay. So, kailangan mo siyang i-ping. Ito si CMD natin. Ta-type natin yung word na ping, space, yung IP address ng ating router or modem. Pag hit mo na enter at nakakita ka ng puro reply, ibig sabihin may connection, walang problema kay modem o kaya kay router. Pero kung ang nakita mo dito is reply, reply, tapos biglang nag-time out, ibig sabihin, may problema kay ano, kay router or modem. Pwedeng sa service provider. Ano bang usually na nangyayari pag nawawala ng internet? May bagyo. Yan. Kasi alam nyo, signals yan eh. So, kapag mahangin masyado, nagkakaroon ng interference sa cables, nahahangin talaga ang signals at napupunta siya sa kung saan saan kan, nagkakaroon talaga ng ano, uh, glitch yung internet connection. Okay. So, pag gano'n na nangyari, pwede mong itawag dun sa service provider nyo. Itawag mo kay Globe, itawag mo kay PLDT, itawag mo kay Smart, itawag mo kay Sun. Meron pa bang buy and tell? So, kung sino yung service provider, itawag mo doon, sabihin mo yung concern. Then, gagamit ka ulit ng keyword na IP config. Nasa CMD ka pa rin nito ha. Type mo yung IP config, hit enter. That is for you to know the IP address of your computer and the default gateway. Default, way, default gateway here is the IP address of the service provider. Remember, iba ang IP address ni router at modem, iba ang IP address ni computer, iba rin ang IP address ni internet provider. So, para hindi kayo mal malito, si IP address ng modem or router, nandun siya sa ilalim ng modem or router. Si IP address ng computer mo, makikita mo lang kapag ikaw ay nag-IP config sa CMD. So, makikita mo dyan IP address, ito ang IP address ng computer mo. Ngayon, si default gateway, siya yung tawag dun sa IP ng internet service provider. So, ito, ito si Globe, ito si PLDT, ganyan. Ito ka ngayon, yung computer mo. Okay, so bakit natin kailangan yan? Kasi, kailangan natin iping si default gateway. ba diba, nakita na natin yung default gateway. Si, ano ba yung number na yon You need to do the ping, CMD pa rin to, space, the default gateway. Pag nakita mo na nagre-reply-reply, so yun, still, wala pa rin problema kay internet, may signal pa rin yan, pero kapag nagta-time out, kailangan nyo mag-ask ng assistance sa service provider. Okay. So yun, that concludes our lesson for today. Wow, 30 minutes. So, uh, by the way, I'm using Sway. This is a product of Microsoft, an online presentation tool. Okay. If you know more about this application, you can visit the Microsoft website. And from there, syempre, magkakreate muna kayo ng Microsoft account nyo. I-verify pa yan through your email. Tapos, pwede nyo gamitin tong Sway. Pwede nyo tong gamitin sa mga reports. Ganyan. Kung, kung talagang bagot na bagot na kayo sa PowerPoint, pwede kayo gumamit ng Sway. Maraming effects dyan. Yun nga lang, it, this is online. Okay? Kailangan may internet connection ka para makita. Then, pwede mo rin yan i-share sa social media accounts, yan, Twitter, or share by a link. Okay? Ito kasi sa akin, nag-video ako dito. Okay, so that concludes our lecture for today. I do hope na naintindihan nyo naman. If you have questions, you can uh, reply or you can comment down the comment section dun sa YouTube channel ko. Okay, or just comment from the comment section dun sa Facebook group natin. Okay, ciao!